Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ironworker Gaming Channel. I am Ironworker814, and thank you for joining me for another Destiny 2 viewer-requested weapon review, where we take a look at how to acquire the weapon, briefly analyze its perks and stats, and then test its functionality before putting it through its paces in all three of Destiny 2's core activities. This review was requested by Mark Plant and Dan Sansone, and the weapon we're taking a look at today is the Devil's Ruin Exotic Sidearm. So if at any point during this video you find it useful, helpful, or just enjoyable, the like button is there for you to show your support. And consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming Channel to catch more videos similar to this one. But the Devil's Ruin is a weapon that really shows that Bungie is making a conscious effort to make sure that exotic weapons feel more exotic. Pre-Shadow Keep, a lot of Destiny 2's exotics just felt like a better version of your baseline legendary weapon. Now don't get me wrong, there were a handful of really cool exotics pre-Shadow Keep, like the Two-Tailed Fox. I absolutely adore that rocket launcher, and its usefulness or effectiveness is certainly not top tier, but nevertheless, it's just the weapon that I truly enjoy pulling the trigger on. And I'm sure for some people, Devil's Ruin probably has the same effect. Its two very unique fire modes could open the door to a lot of different avenues to use this weapon, and we're going to explore some of those avenues in this video, right after we take a look at how to acquire the weapon for those who have not done so already. Devil's Ruin released back in Season of Dawn to a uh, very limited fanfare. Perhaps mainly due to the way you initially acquired this weapon. Basically, you would do a sundial run and then load into a mission on the Twilight Gap Crucible map. Here you get some dialogue between State 14 and Lord Shax, which was actually really well done, kind of humorous. But that was it. That was, that was the quest. Unfortunately, when Season of Dawn departed, so did the ability to acquire Devil's Ruin in this manner. If you're watching this video in Season 11, the only way that I know of to obtain the Devil's Ruin right now is via the Exotic Cipher, which is available in the Season Pass. Because I don't think any of Shadowkeep's seasonal quest exotics have been added to the general loot pool yet. So once you hit rank 55 in the season pass, you can pick up this exotic cipher and take it to the Cryptarch at the tower. So if you decide that you want to spend your cipher on Devil's Ruin, and have the glimmer, materials, and prisms available, it is yours for the taking. So Devil's Ruin is an exotic solar sidearm shooting at 300 rounds per minute with 15 rounds in the magazine, and the alternate fire mode has a charge time of 1000, or 1 second in human speed. When comparing it to other sidearms, the range stat is quite good. The stability is slightly above average, but the reload and handling are quite poor. Checking the hidden stats on light.gg, we see we have an aim assist value of 56, a bounce intensity of 0, a recoil direction of 100, so the little bit of muzzle climb that you're going to see is going to be vertical. The intrinsic trait is close the gap, variable trigger, press and release to fire individual shots, hold the trigger to charge up a high powered staggering laser strong against unstoppable champions. The exotic perk is Pyrogenesis. Fully charging the laser refills the magazine from reserves. So as you can tell, there is a fair bit of intricacy involved with Devil's Ruin. So let's head over to the Tribute Hall to better examine its functionality. Alright, first thing we should probably do is take a look at the weapon's two fire modes. When pressing and releasing the trigger, Devil's Ruin functions like a standard sidearm. But yes, it does fire on release. Definitely keep this in mind. But when pressing and holding the trigger, we see that solar laser fire, very similar to the beam from a trace rifle or 1000 voices. When this laser touches off, it is going to consume 15 rounds of ammunition, regardless of how many bullets you have in your magazine. If you have 10 rounds left in the mag, it'll pull five from reserves. If you have one round left in the mag, it's going to pull 14 from reserves. So the bullets left in your magazine don't affect the laser's damage, duration, or range in any way. And even if you are down to your very last bullet, with zero rounds in reserves, you are still going to fire a full beam. And just like any other weapon that charges before firing, you can sprint cancel this charge. Or simply release the trigger and you will fire a single bullet. We'll use this major knight here to get a baseline sense of our damage output. Devil's Ruin hits for 1,954 points of damage on a crit and 1,392 points of damage to the body when being used in the standard fire mode. I'm using Drang which occupies the energy slot also and fires at 300 rounds per minute as a measuring stick. Drang is doing 1,987 points of damage on a crit and 1,415 to the body. Just a shade more than Devil's Ruin is doing but we are in the same ballpark. When using Devil's Ruin to fire the laser, 
each of the 15 rounds, land for 1,597 points of damage to the body. That's a total of 23,955 points of damage from a single burst. To gain a little more perspective here, this Dust Rock Blues hits for 1,216 points of damage per pellet for a total of 13,376. In this loaded question, without Reservoir Burst proc, because that'd be cheating, hits for 3,307 points of damage per bolt for a total of 23,149, which still doesn't match the single burst damage from Devil's Ruin. Another thing to keep in mind though is that fusion rifles cannot crit. Devil's Ruin can. And in this case, it crits to the tune of 2,242 points of damage per bullet for a total of 33,630 damage. Not too bad for a single burst that is only costing you primary ammo. So we're talking about a nice little sidearm that can output some serious damage, but let's get into some PVE environments and see what it can do. So for your run of the mill PVE activities, Devil's Ruin is pretty impressive, especially if you like to push the pace and keep right on top of enemy combatants. It has three very useful characteristics, utility, efficiency, and damage. Devil's Ruin, in a sense, can be whatever you need it to be at any time. It does just fine for working your way through the play space and quickly dispatching ads with the standard fire mode. Even ads with larger health pools like knights, gladiators, centurions, colossuses. The base fire mode drops them quickly when you're landing crits. To burst down majors or targets that just need to die right now, the alternate fire mode provides this without having to spend special or heavy ammo. The burst damage it delivers is quite impressive. And if adds are all piled up on top of each other, a quick wave of the barrel across the pack as the charge is firing off will burn down a good bit of them. A few other things to note, Devil's Ruin may not be a bad option for some of the game's more challenging content. More specifically, Nightfall Ordeals or Nightmare Hunts since his gun intrinsically does have the ability to stagger unstoppable champions. Plus, in Nightmare Hunts, you periodically get that wave of solar shielded enemies coming at you that I forget about every single time. But if you are packing Devil's Ruin, you have a solar weapon to deal with these turds. Versus bosses, it's a better option than most other primaries, but it's actually not ideal for DPS. While the burst damage this weapon delivers is very solid, it does take roughly 1.3 seconds to charge and fire a full burst, plus a little more if you account for the reload time. So a special or heavy weapon is definitely going to win out here if you're looking at sustained damage over time. And Devil's Ruin is also a bit of an ammo hog. Since you're shooting at 300 rounds per minute, even in the standard fire mode, you can run through that 15 round magazine pretty quickly. And if you're constantly dumping your burst laser in the targets, you can find yourself in short supply of primary ammo before you even realize that you needed some. Also, there is no catalyst available for Devil's Ruin, so you won't be able to generate any orbs of light with this gun. And before we move into Gambit, I just want to say that there are some pretty nasty sidearm builds out there right now. I'm not going to get into those in this video, but if you'd like to leave your favorite down in the comments, feel free. But onward to Gambit. In Gambit, Devil's Ruin does hold up pretty well. The action is fast paced and the engagements are generally close quarters. And since you gotta be dropping ads quick and picking up moats, Devil's Ruin is not a bad option here. The high damage at close range is great and the ability to deal with larger targets with primary ammo is always helpful. Carrying a weapon with solar elemental damage, once again, proves itself useful for dealing with the taken captain blockers at the bank. They are probably the most annoying of the blockers and anything that helps get rid of those teleporting a-holes more quickly is appreciated. Against invaders, Devil's Ruin does an okay job, provided you can close the gap on the enemy player. When invading, this weapon could be a good backup option, but I don't think you'd want to bank on it being your primary source of kills. Things kind of fall apart for Devil's Ruin during the boss phase in Standard Gambit. First off, you're dealing with void shielded envoys, so you won't get that AoE blast damage when you break their shield. And being a short ranged weapon that runs through its ammo pretty quickly, it can be tough to keep yourself in position to output maximum damage and collect ammo bricks due to the congestion of the area and the stomp mechanic of the bosses. If you can keep yourself worked in tight, the damage output definitely is there, but this oftentimes is not an option. That's about gonna wrap it up for Gambit. Next up, the Crucible, and we'll start things off by taking a look at some damage numbers.
Alright, for our PvP damage numbers, when using the standard fire mode, Devil's Ruin will do 51 points of damage on a crit and 37 points of damage to the body, which gives us an optimal time to kill of 0.6 seconds requiring 4 crits and a body shot time to kill of 1 second requiring 6 shots landed. When using the charged laser, each damage tick will do 36 points of damage on a crit and 26 points of damage to the body. Putting our optimal time to kill here at 0.3 seconds, requiring 5 crits and 1 body shot, and a body shot time to kill of 0.36 seconds, requiring 8 shots landed. You also have the ability to down a guardian in their super by landing 12 crits from the burst, but a single burst to the body just comes up a little bit short. Looking at the range, we will see damage fall off past the 16 meter mark. I only captured this in the standard fire mode, but I went back to test it with the alt fire mode and came up with the same results. Damage fall off past 16 meters. And with that, let's check out Devil's Ruins performance in PvP. Using Devil's Ruin in PvP provides a very unique experience. This is really neither a good thing or a bad thing but you're definitely going to need to get a feel for this gun. There is a learning curve with this weapon, one that I really have not developed in my limited time using Devil's Ruin. But at base, this is a 300 round per minute sidearm. At close range, the damage output and the time to kill values are there. For those who can push the pace and land shots at close range while remaining mobile, this gun can drop guardians quick even with the standard fire mode. And the beam fire mode provides the ability to down guardians extremely fast. This can really take enemy players off guard if you can keep that beam on them, regardless of whether you're landing crits or bodies. This is great for stuffing players who are trying to close the gap on you, or for burning down over aggressive players if you can bait them into an unfortunate position. Plus we do have the ability to dispose of enemy guardians in their super very quickly, and the speed at which a primary weapon could accomplish this was very surprising to me. This gun does have some quirks though. Firing on release in the standard fire mode is not too off-putting on PC because we're simply clicking a mouse. But I could imagine for a player using a controller, due to the wider range of motion on the trigger buttons, this difference could be noticeable. And then the whole charge and fire mechanic is definitely a function that carries with it the aforementioned learning curve. The charge time is very long at 1 second. This was something I had a hard time adjusting to, even as a player who used high impact fusion rifles a good bit. But unlike with fusions, you will need to track your target for a brief period of time as that burst releases. So while the beam is very powerful, the trade off is that it does require a certain degree of anticipation and skill to make the most out of it. And lastly, if you charge and fire your laser and it does not secure you a kill, you could find yourself in a tough spot. Since obviously firing off that laser empties your magazine. And the reload speed for Devil's Ruin isn't great. I ran a scout rifle or a bow as my off weapon in a few matches. So in this scenario, when I was in tight and I dumped my entire mag by shooting off that charged laser, it was pretty much a death sentence if I did not down my target. And with that, let's get to the verdict. So Devil's Ruin all in all stands as a very interesting weapon due to the amount of utility it can provide to the user. While it can see success in Gambit, and it could be a very strong weapon in the Crucible, as long as you have the time to dedicate to gaining a feel for the weapon, I would venture to say that this weapon would serve you best in your general PvE activities. I really feel like this is the aspect of the game where you can make the most out of this gun. Primary ammo is abundant, the solar elemental damage can be taken advantage of, and you can make use of the unstoppable intrinsic nature of the weapon. Plus, it's very satisfying steamrolling through rooms of ads, plinking targets with the standard fire mode, and bursting down majors with the charged laser. That said, if you don't have any of the other weapons offered by cashing in that single exotic cipher that you have, I personally wouldn't take Devil's Ruin over any of these other weapons. And that's simply because sidearms really aren't my thing and they don't fit the way I play Destiny. But ultimately, this choice is up to you. So as always, if you feel this weapon review was worth your time, the like button is there to show this video some support. And think about subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to see more videos similar to this one. I'll leave you a few more videos at the end of this one, just in case you need further convincing. You can follow Ironworker814 on Twitch or Twitter, and to contact me, simply comment down below and I will be sure to get back to you. And with all that being said, thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.